Hello, my name is Dr. Punica. We are now demonstrating the MRCP PACES Station 1 cardiology. No, Hello, no my name is Dr. Punica. Is Dr. Yes, sir. Please come in. Thank you. This is Zay, a 22 year old accountant who has been sent to the cardiology clinic with a heart murmur by his GP. Please examine his heart and tell me your findings. Hello Zay, I'm Dr. Sahil, one of the candidates in the exam. Is, am I okay to examine your heart today? That's fine. I might have to take you down a path if that's okay. That's fine. Alright, thank you. I'm going to have a look from the end of the bed first. I'm looking for any visible pulsation for the chest movements and any scars of previous surgery. Okay, I'm going to start by having a look at your hands first. Can I pull up your hands first? Okay, I'm looking for any obvious stenosis, any clubbing, and splinter hemorrhages. Can I have a look at the palms as well? Also looking for the stigmata of endocarditis, such as um, Osler's nose. Right, going to have a feed for your pulse now. Pulse is regular at a rate of 100 beats per minute. Do you have any pain in your arm? No, I don't. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have a close look at your neck now. Can you look towards the left for me, please? I'm just going to press on your tummy. The JVP is not raised and the fetal reflex is negative. I'm going to have a look at your chest now. Okay, just going to feed for your heart. I'm feeling for any palpable fluids. Okay, I'm going to have a listen to your heart now. Okay. I'm going to feel your pulse at the same time. Can you lean towards your left side for me, please? Okay, that's fine. Let's line me back again. Can you do the same again? Can you take a deep breath in and out? Hold it there. Okay. Deep breath in and out. Hold it there. That's fine. Gonna have a little listen in your neck. Okay, are you able to sit up for me? Yeah. Just gonna have a little listen to the back of your chest as well. Take nice deep breaths for me. One minute left. Okay. I'm just going to press at the bottom of your back as well. Okay. okay, that's fine, just lie down. And in the end I'm going to have a look at your feet, okay? That's right. I'm going to examine the legs for any pitting edema. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, have you finished your examination? Um, yes. Okay, good. I would like to complete my examination by measuring the blood pressure, taking a look at the observation chart and a urine dipstick.
Okay, good. So let's move on now. Would you like to present your findings, please? Okay. This young gentleman on the examination of precordium has a pan-systolic murmur that's heard at the left, lower left sternal edge, which is localized with no radiation and is associated with a palpable thrill at the lower left sternal edge as well. Um, there were no signs of heart failure and there was no cyanosis. My most likely diagnosis for this gentleman would be a ventricular septal defect. Okay, right. So you said a few things there. You said that he has a pan-systolic murmur best heard at the left sternal edge that's associated with a palpable thrill. Um, the pan-systolic murmur was not radiating anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for example, the pan-systolic murmur was actually radiating to the carotids. Would you have any other differential diagnoses? If the murmur was to be radiating to the carotids, I would think of aortic stenosis. Also, if the murmur um, was radiating to the axilla, I would have thought about mitral regurgitation. For this gentleman, this was a localised murmur at the left sternal edge, and that makes me believe this gentleman might have a BSD. Okay, okay. So, for example, if you were considering aortic stenosis, just, just say this was actually radiating to the carotids, would you expect a pan-systolic murmur with aortic stenosis? I would expect an ejection systolic murmur instead of a pan-systolic murmur. Okay. But this gentleman definitely has a pan-systolic murmur. Yeah. Okay. So he is 22 years old and he's got a pan-systolic murmur. He's come to your cardiology clinic and you've diagnosed a VSD. The patient is very concerned and would like to know the natural history of the disease. What would you tell him? Is it going to close by itself? Does he have to see a surgeon? What does he have to do? Most VSDs um, uh, have a spontaneous closure rate of about 40 to 60 percent during childhood okay. and about 10 percent during adulthood. However, I would like to fully investigate the patient by taking a detailed history, a full systemic examination, 12 lead ECG, chest x-ray, echocardiogram and possibly cardiac catheterization. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Let's move on from that point. Uh, so you've diagnosed a VSD, the patient is concerned and the patient GP is concerned about the risk of endocarditis. What would you tell the GP? Does the GP have to give him prophylactic antibiotics? Diagnosing this patient with VSD, he certainly has a higher risk of developing endocarditis than average population. However, um, the guidelines do not recommend prophylaxis unless there is a previous history of endocarditis or if there is development of cyanotic heart disease. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, let's move on. Um, what do you think would be the risk of this 22-year-old gentleman developing heart failure with his VSD? Um, patients with moderate to large VSDs can develop heart failure, however this is usually during childhood as it is best managed with medical treatment. Okay, okay. So let's just uh, move on to another subject then. Let's just come back to endocarditis. Um, what type of VSD is more likely to, um, to develop endocarditis? Moderate or large side, large side VSDs are more likely to develop endocarditis. Okay, okay. Um, right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you did well there, Samira. Um, I thought your approach was good, you were systematic, you took your time, you examined the patient very well. Um, what do you think? How do you think you did? Um, I think overall I did um, okay. I, my examination was quite smooth and it was, the procedure was sleek. I picked up the right findings and I got to the right diagnosis in the end. However, um, I would have liked to look into the mouth and look into the eyes of the patients as well, which I missed. Okay, okay. Right. Dr. Dahl, what, what do you think we could have done better? I think you did a very good job. So that was very smooth, systematic, your technique were very slick. The only thing I would add is that when you are inspecting, do it really well, ask the patient to lift up their arm to look for any scar. If it is a very small scar underneath the axilla, if it is not a very thorough inspection, you might have missed that. And when you are checking the pulse before moving to the neck, ask the examiner that at this stage, I would like to check the blood pressure. 
-hmm. and they might say the blood pressure is 160 over 50. That can give you an important clue that potentially you might be dealing with an aortic regurgitation. Mm -hmm. So try to do it then and there. And when you are summarizing the findings, there are two ways of doing it. If you are very confident, you can start off with the diagnosis that I believe this gentleman has got small VSD as evidenced by your findings. Or you can summarize the findings and that can, you know, you can say that I have got few differential diagnoses such as. So either way is fine, okay. but it depends which ever way you are feeling more comfortable. Okay. okay. Um, so. Well, I, I would like to say that I would pass you for this examination and for the discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.